الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد عن ابي سروعه عقبه بن الحارث رضي الله عنه قال صليت وراء النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بالمدينه العصرى فسلم ثم قام مسرعا فتخطى رقاب الناس الى بعض حجر نسائه ففزع الناس من سرعته فخرج عليهم فراى انهم قد عجبوا من سرعته قال ذكرت شيئا من تبر عندنا فكرهت ان يحبسني فامرت بقسمته وفي روايه كنت خلفت في البيت تبرا من الصدقه فكرهت ان ابيته حضرت عقبه بن الحارث رضي الله عنه نريتس I joined the Asr Salah with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Medina Sharif. The moment he finished his salah, he stood up and stepping across the line of the musallis, he hastened to one of his chambers. People in the gathering were surprised by such haste. When he came back, he explained his action by saying I recalled that there was left with me a piece of silver or gold and this disturbed me I have now arranged for its distribution another hadith says that there was left with me a piece of silver or gold which was meant for charity I was disturbed that it should remain with me overnight Hadith is clear we are reading the chapter of Al Mubadaratu ila al khairat hastening towards doing good deeds when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places in our heart the thought to do something good then we should be quick to do it we shouldn't delay it oh i'll do it tomorrow day after tomorrow otherwise what's going to happen is shaitan will come in between and he'll stop us from doing it so when you get the thought of doing something good then think that this thought is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is allah who inspired me with this thought of doing good let me do it now straight away there and then go and do it this is mentioned in this hadith sallaytu wara an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam bil madinati al-asra namaz padhi now prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam bi salam alaykum salam alaykum and he stood up very quickly hurriedly and he crossed over the shoulders of people and he crossed the sufuf and he went into one of his houses which was adjacent to the masjid and uh, people were you know shocked at his hastening and rushing because he would never do that normally after salah he would sit on his place and read some tasbihat and then very after you know short period then when he would finish his tasbihat and his azkar awrad then he would stand up and go where he would want to so this was something new for them so they were shocked at this when he came back and he noticed that they are somewhat puzzled at this behavior he said the thing is i remember a piece of gold or a piece of silver which was with me in the house i did not want that piece of gold or silver to stay with me throughout the night what if i die during the night and that is with me so i said go give it away quickly distribute it allahu akbar look at the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and look at ourselves we look at our bank statements every day whenever a bank statement come how much have i got has it increased or decreased if it decreased where is it gone why is it not increasing and over here the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is worried about increasing his sawab in the akhirah and he is quickly distributing it so he can get the sawab and reward in the year after he prefers the year after over this world so this is 
uh, something to say that we should hasten towards doing good deeds. I read in one book of Tasawwuf that once Iblis said to Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam, do me this favor. Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam said, okay. So he asked, let me mention, he asked Sayyiduna Musa alayhi salam, oh Musa, is Allah not Ghafurur Rahim? Of course he is Ghafurur Rahim. Then can he forgive all sins? Of course he can forgive all sins. Can he forgive me? Well, he can forgive you as well if he wants. Then Musa, if you can ask Allah to forgive me, do my sifarish, intercede for me. Musa alayhi salam said, okay. Musa alayhi salam asked, oh Allah, Iblis is also your makhluk. He is your creation. He is asking for forgiveness. Forgive him. Allah Park said, oh Musa, okay, I will forgive him, but under one condition. Tell him, you didn't do sajda to Adam alayhi salam, so go and do sajda on his qabr and I'll forgive you. I'll take that as your obedience and your fulfilling of the command. Now the aim is not to make him do sajda at the qabr because sajda on a qabr is haram. The aim over here is just testing. So Musa alayhi salam said, Iblis, this is the instruction. And Iblis, nah, I didn't do sajda to him when he was alive. I'm not going to do it after his death. Nah, that's not going to happen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa alayhi salam, Musa, you see, I told you, he's got so much haughtiness in him, so much takabbur, and this is what is stopping and preventing and causing a barrier between him and the forgiveness. If he showed a little bit of humility, humbleness, I would forgive him, but he's not showing any humility. Now, the thing is done. Iblis said, Musa, thank you for your favor. You did me a favor, and I'll do you a favor as well. And he said three things. Number one, he said, Musa, you know, never sit with a strange woman on your own. Because when a man and woman are in seclusion, then I don't send my army there. I rush myself and I whisper both parties and try my best to make them fornicate and commit zina. So tell Bani Israel this instruction, don't sit alone with a stranger. And then he said, and number two Musa, when you intend to give something in Sadaqah, give it straight away. Because if you delay it, then I rush myself to that place and I try my best to stop that person from giving that Sadaqah. Because Sadaqa pours water over my whole effort and mehnat hard work. I make people sin and then they give Sadaqa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wipes out that sin and forgives them. So all my hard work goes to nothing. So therefore, when you intend to do Sadaqa, don't delay it. Because if you delay it, then I will rush quickly and stop you from doing it. Tell that to your people, Bani Israel. And he mentioned the third thing as well. This is what we want to understand over here. When we get the in, uh, feeling of giving something in the path of Allah for sadaqa, we should give it immediately like Rasulullah <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave it over here. Immediately rushed home and gave it away. He did and came back to do his tasbihat after that. Because he didn't want that piece of gold or silver to stay with him overnight. And uh, this is what he taught Ummahatul Mu'mineen, he's taught us as well. Once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had a goat slaughtered and then it was skinned and then the meat was prepared. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started sending meat to some poor people among the community. Take this to so and so, give this to so and so, give this to so and so. Only one shoulder was left and all the goat was gone. So Aisha radiallahu anha said, Ya Rasulullah, the whole goat is gone. Only one shoulder's meat left. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, No Aisha, the whole goat is left. Only this shoulder will go. Because we have reserved that sawab in the hereafter for us. 
So that is for us. We're going to eat this. This is, is going to go. Otherwise, the whole goat is left for us in the after, hereafter. The thawab and the reward is reserved in the bank of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's going to give us over there. So this is how he used to give charity in the path of Allah and hope for reward from Allah. And he would hasten towards every good deed that he could do. And this was the habit of the mashayikh of Sahaba, Tabi'een, Tabi'i Tabi'een, our Salaf is Salihin. They would never waste time. They would keep themselves busy in doing something good, especially in matters of sadaqah. They would give and give and give and spend and spend and spend. May Allah give us tawfiq. Now, we move on. Now, this chapter has many hadith. I'm not going to read every hadith. It's some out. We'll go on to the next hadith. عن ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه قال جاء رجل الى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال يا رسول الله اي الصدقه اعظم اجرا قال ان تصدق وانت صحيح شحيح تخشى الفقر وتامل الغنى ولا تمهل حتى اذا بلغت الحلقوم قلت لفلان كذا ولفلان كذا وقد كان لفلان سيدنا ابو هريره رضي الله عنه نريت that a man came and requested the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم asked a question to him, Ya Rasulullah, which act of sadaqah is most virtuous? Which sadaqah is the greatest in reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, that you give sadaqah while you are healthy and you, uh, you are in greedy and in need and you fear becoming poor if you give away and you hope to become rich if you withhold it but still you give it and you do not delay spending until when your ruh and soul reaches your throat meaning you are in the pangs of death you say give so and so much to so and so person and so and so much to so and so person whereas it has become the property of so and so person meaning the inheritors the heirs so rasulullah sallallahu is asked a simple question ayyu sadaqati a'zamu ajran which sadaqa holds the greatest reward which sadaqa has the greatest reward in various ahadith he is given different answers as well in another riwayat he said afdalu sadaqati juhdul muqilli the best sadaqa is the sadaqa of a, of the uh, hard work and hard earned money of a poor person so when a poor person who's had his blood and sweat uh, to earn that money and then he gives sadaqa then that is most rewarding because he needs it but he gives preference to others over himself then this sadaqa gets most reward over here he gave another answer he said the most virtuous and the best sadaqah is that you have money and you are healthy you're not sick you are shaheeh you are greedy you want more 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 and you fear that if i give this money away i might fall in need for it i might be become fakir poor and in need of it and if i leave it with me then i'll become ghani and rich but in spite of these obstacles, you still spend in the path of Allah. You say, no, no, no. I give preference to the needy and the poor over myself. Give it away in the path of Allah. Allah will give me. Allah will look after me. So you have yaqeen and tawakkul upon Allah and you spend it. This is the best form of sadaqah. And you do not delay. Oh, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give tomorrow, day after tomorrow, next week, Ramzan, after Ramzan, next year. You keep delaying, 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 delaying until a time comes when Malakul Mawt is there and your ruh is being extracted from your feet side. At that time, you start panicking. And in that panic attack, you say, you know, I've got so much money. Now give so much to so-and-so, so much to so-and-so, so much to so-and-so. Whereas when you're in Marazul Wafat, in that, in that last moments, in the pangs of death, then whatever wasiyat and will you make is not accepted. It will be at the discretion of the heirs. 
So if you make a will at that time, you can't do it. If you say give all my money to so and so person, you can't. The most you can give out is from one third. Otherwise, two third has become the property of your heirs, your family, your children, your wife. It will be going to them. You can't take it with you now. You should have taken it with you while you were alive, you were tandrus, you were sihatmand, and you were healthy, that's when you should have taken it with you. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam is encouraging that a person should not delay and postpone his charity work. He should do and give as much charity as he can, wherever he can, wherever people need it, and uh, he can, he can uh, uh, you know, take it and transfer it further. So, this is also regarding al-hathu al-mubadarati al khairat to encourage people to rush in doing good deeds. Another hadith. And is Zubair ibn Adijin radiyallahu anhu qala atayna anas ibn Malikin radiyallahu anhu fashakawna ilayhi ma nalqa min al-hajjaj faqala isbiru fa innahu la yati ala al-nasi zamanun illa walladhi ba'dahu sharrun minhu hatta talqaw rabbakum. Zubair ibn Adi says we came to anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu the greatest sahabi and the khadim of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we related to him the, the hardships and the suffering we were getting at the hands of Hajjaj ibn Yusuf the tyrant. So he said, O oh people, be patient. Because no era comes upon a people, but the one that follows is worse than that. Until you meet your Rabb. I have heard this from the Prophet wasallam, Rawahul Bukhari. Hajjaj ibn Yusuf was a great zalim. And he was a bloodthirsty person. And he would kill, 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 kill. In his diary, there was nothing but killing, killing. And he killed many tabi'een, tabi'i tabi'een. In fact, many sahaba as well. And Muarrikhin write that he had killed 120,000 people in front of him. And those who died in his battles were countless. So imagine what a big tyrant he was and everybody was scared and terrified and suffering at, under, at his hands. So people said, Hajjad, you know, uh, they said that this is happening, this happened, that happened, this happened, that happened. So Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu sahabi said, Isbiru, do sabr. Because whenever a period comes upon a people, then the one which follows will be even worse. So, you know, take it as something is happening, do sabr, do whatever you can. And this is, this is where, because you know that a worse period is coming, so now you should be doing good deeds. Do as much good deeds as you can now, so at that time you can protect yourself. Now, this wor these words, that every, the period that follows is worse than the present one. Sometimes we see that that's not always the case. Many times good times come, after, uh, you know, bad ones. Like, for example, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf's era finished. And then at the end of the uh, turn of the first century and moving into the second century of Islamic calendar, Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahmatullahi came. And that era was of very good times. So what does this hadith mean? One explanation is that this means generally, most of the time, there can be exceptions. So Umar ibn Abdul Aziz's era was an exception. So, and there will be many exceptions during the, uh, you know, course of uh, events and during the history, you will find many such exceptions. So not all the time, many times, good times come as well, but that is, uh, you know, little in relation to the hardships and the bad times that will come. So normally what happens is, as we say in Urdu, Bhut Marina Khabis Pedate. When a boot dies, then a khabis is born. So this is what happens. So normally, this is what uh, the cycle that uh, takes place. Otherwise, many times, there are good times as well. Another explanation is that uh, when Hassan Basri Rahmatullah was asked regarding this, he said, La buddha lin nasi min zamanin yatanafasuna fihir. There should be some breathing period. So Umar ibn Abdul Aziz's era was just a breathing period. Otherwise, times, you know, are tough and they keep getting tougher and tougher. And we are living in such era as well. Day by day, things are getting really, really tough. We are getting new rules, new regulations. 
and things happening today the incident happened and it's all over the news now what's going on Allah knows what's going to happen now some new rules and regulations will come now and we'll have to suffer we have to suffer so what we need to do is stick to our deen and you know try and save the iman of our children work on them and uh, inshallah if we do what we need to do Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will look after us protect us we do we can't worry about the whole world we have to worry about ourselves our families those around us do our best so this is why we have to keep working 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 and we can't stop and we have to keep doing good deeds this is why this hadith is brought over here in al mubadarat al khairat another hadith عن ابي هريره رضي الله تعالى عنه ان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بادروا بالاعمال سبعا هل تنتظرون الا فقرا منسيا او غنا مضغيا او مرضا مفسدا او هرما مفندا او موتا مجهزا او الدجال فشر فالدجال فشر غائب ينتظر او الساعه والساعه وادها وامر رواه الترمذي سيدنا ابو هريره رضي الله عنه نريت ذات رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال lose no time to do good work before you are caught up by one of these seven calamities then by way of warning he recounted either a starvation which may impair your wisdom or a prosperity which may mislead you or a sickness which may damage your health or an old age which may harm your senses or a sudden death or the appearance of the jal and remember that the jal is the most evil absent person who could be awaited or qiyamah doomsday because the hour is indeed very hard and very bitter meaning one of these seven things is going to come on you either you are you are rich at the moment but things can turn dramatically and all that richness can go and you can become needy as well so since you have wealth now and you're not needy then spend in the path of allah and do as many good deeds as you can or if you if that's not the case the number two you are poor now in needy but you could become rich and when suddenly a person becomes millionaire overnight then that 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 richness can bring tughyan and sarkashi and rebellion in him so because of that richness he will rebel and he will start spending he will go on a spending spree and if he won a jackpot of million pounds in the national lottery then he's going to buy a ferrari and he's going to buy a mansion and then he's going to get all the sin as much as he can and this is what happens sometimes a rich father dies and the son after him inherits that money and he goes down the drugs and sharab and alcohol and prostitutes and this and that so this is tughyan so if you become suddenly rich you could become a mutghiyan so while you are at the moment in good shape good hand humble do as many good deeds as you can and don't delay or if that doesn't happen then maradan mufsidan sometimes sickness comes and it ruins the body so at the moment we are healthy but something could happen allah bachaye diabetes cholesterol arthritis sicknesses weakness arth, uh, you know weakness of bones old uh, and, and this bimari and sickness comes and when you are sick you know you just lying there maybe knows will la cancer may allah protect us and then you're always in pain and you want to do good thing but you can't do it so before any sickness comes upon you which ruins your body or old age which uh damages your senses fanad fani de yafnadu fanadan means to become senile aur baithe baithe bag 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 aur bad badate rehna so you become so old that you are burbadaing and all the time and you people just ignore you don't pay attention to you and leave you on one side in one corner of the house they don't uh, pay attention to what you say this is haraman mufnidan and in old age your koa become weak now you want to read some book or something you can't do it and you want to do something then you can't you want to pray you can't sometimes you you know you go you uh, in old age you have to pray sitting down or on a chair you want to do sajda but you can't do sajda so while you are healthy you can put your forehead on the ground then put your forehead on the ground do as many sajda as you can pray tahajjud you know pray ishraq chaasht awwabin 
Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu anhu was dying and he called Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhu giving some advices and some among those advices he said oh Umar remember there are some a'mal of the day which Allah doesn't accept at night and there are some a'mal of the night which Allah doesn't accept in the day a'mal of the day you you will become khalifa you will have to uh, you know go around and do justice in sa and look after everything if you try to do that at night Allah won't accept it and at night is tahajjud qiyamul layl if you try to pray that at night and you reverse tables then Allah won't accept it you have to pray your tahajjud at night you have to do your tilawat and zikr and tasbihat and your duas at night so do the a'mal of night at night and do the a'mal of day in day so keep both things in perspective. So this is a haram and mufnidan. If not, then a mot and mujizan. Death will come and finish you off. So before death finishes you off, do as many good deeds as you can. Or if not, then Dajjal is going to come. And Dajjal is the worst uh, ghaib whom you can wait for. So you want to wait for Dajjal? People say Imam Mahdi, Imam Mahdi, Imam Mahdi is coming. He's going to come now. He's born and he's going to after 40 years. So, time. so I say, oh, bye, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, if Imam Mahdi comes, then who's going to follow him? Dajjal. Are you ready for Dajjal? No, I'm not ready if I don't. Dajjal fitna toba toba astaghfirullah. Then why you keep waiting for Imam Mahdi? Just do what you need to do. Many people discuss about Imam Mahdi throughout the night until 2 o'clock and then they miss Fajr namaz. Go to sleep and don't pray Fajr salah. So what is this discussion about Imam Mahdi and Qiyamah and all, all this? Allah didn't tell us to discuss about Imam Mahdi, it was to practice. So don't wait for the Dajjal, he's the most evil person you could wait for. Or finally, As-Sa'a, Qiyamat. And Qiyamat is very scary and very bitter. On the day of Qiyamat, everybody is going to be scared, terrified, standing in front of Allah, very bitter. Allah Pak said, Ya Yuhan Nas, Ittaqu Rabbakum, Inna Zalzalata Sa'ati Shay'un Azim. The Zalzala and the quaking of the hour is huge, is mighty. The day you see the hour when people come out of the grave, they will be so scared that a breastfeeding mother will forget her child. And due to fear, a pregnant woman, heavily pregnant woman, will 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 miscarry her child. You will feel that people are intoxicated. They will not be intoxicated. It will be the azab of Allah which will be severe. So, Qiyamah is terrifying, is bitter. So, are you waiting for Qiyamah? Are you going to do on the day of practice on the day of Qiyamah? Some people today say, Ya chalne do ni sab hota hai, dekhi jayegi, dekhi jayegi, dekhi jayegi. You will see what happens. What do you mean, dekhi jayegi? Is that you going to see what happens when you die? Are you going to see what happens in the Qabr? Are you going to see what happens in Maidan e Are you going to see what happens in Jahannam? So why are you waiting for those moments? Practice now. Do as many good deeds as you can and avoid the sins. Don't disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the message behind this hadith. So <coughs> upon this, the Bab comes to a close. There is one more hadith left, but we'll leave that. We'll go on to the next chapter, which is of Babul Mujahada. Same, similar to this. Over here was Al-Mubadaratu al Khairat, hastening towards good deeds. The next chapter is striving, working hard, making an effort. May Allah give us tawfiq to work hard and make an effort and prepare for our life after death. Jazakumullah. Wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallamu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi wa ashabi ajma'in bi rahmatika ya rahman rahimin. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik nushadu wa la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. اللهم لك الحمد ولك الشكر اللهم لا أعصي ثناء عليك أنت كما أثنيت على نفسك اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم تسليما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تحمل علينا إسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعفو عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا 
انت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى من القول والفعل والعمل والنية والهدية انك على كل شيء قدير يا رحم الراحمين معاذ ابن فضل وكرم سي ہم سب کی مغفرت فرما دیجئے نیک اعمال کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے اور نیک عمل کے لیے جلدی سے دوڑنے کی توفیق عطا فرمائیے سستی کرنے سے ہماری حفاظت فرمائیے لیزی بننے سے ہماری حفاظت فرمائیے اور اللہ نماز روزہ صدقہ خیرات تلاوت تسبیحات ذکر فکر کا اہتمام اور پابندی نصیب فرمائیے یا اللہ ہر قسم کے چھوٹے بڑے گناہوں سے ہماری حفاظت فرمائیے ہماری ٹوٹی پھوٹی دعائیں سن لیجئے ربنا تقبل منا انك انت السميع العليم وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم وصل اللهم وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك